For thousands of years, China's internal weaknesses, natural disaster, famine, plague, civil unrest, and foreign invasion, kept its attention inward. We are now at the greatest turning point in Chinese history since its unification in the 3rd century BC. China is turning outward. But it doesn't want to rule you. It wants to assimilate you. The past year was a watershed. China is developing its own intellectual property in key areas. Some of it is better than ours, in artificial intelligence, telecommunications, cryptography, and electronic warfare. In other key fields like quantum computing, possibly the holy grail of 21st century technology, it's hard to tell who's winning, but China is outspending us by a huge margin. As matters stand, the United States will be overtaken by China in the next several years. And there is nothing secret about China's global ambitions. It aims to integrate Eurasia into a Chinese economic sphere under the multi-trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative, and to use its 5G broadband dominance to lead a fourth industrial revolution. American strategists seem to think we're dealing with the Soviet Union of the 1980s. If only it were that easy. We aren't facing drunken, corrupt Soviet bureaucrats, but a Mandarin elite cherry-picked from the brightest university graduates of the world's largest country. America confronts a 5,000-year-old empire that is pragmatic, curious, adaptive, ruthless, and hungry. China has begged, borrowed, and stolen the technology that made its economy as big as America's. The most important thing China appropriated from the United States is the idea to drive fundamental R&D through the aggressive pursuit of superior weapons systems and let the spin-offs trickle down to the civilian economy. America's response to China's global ambitions has failed. We chronically underestimated China's capabilities and ambitions and we have failed to address our own problems. China envisions a virtual empire in which game-changing technology dominates production, purchasing, finance, and transportation. It puts massive resources into basic research, science education, and infrastructure. By contrast, America's commitment to basic research and science education has shrunk to roughly half its size during the Reagan administration. China now graduates more scientists and engineers than the United States, Europe, Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea combined, and six times as many as the United States alone. Thanks to American graduate schools, Chinese universities have assembled a world-class scientific and engineering faculty. Four out of five doctoral degrees in computer science and electrical engineering in America are awarded to foreign students of whom Chinese are the largest contingent. There is no easy way for America to respond to China. No quick fix, no shortcut. The world has seen nothing like China's global breakout. It will transform the lives of every inhabitant of this planet, including Americans. Can America remain the world's most powerful, productive, and innovative country? We require a national effort on the scale of John F. Kennedy's moonshot and Reagan's strategic defense initiative to restore America's decisive edge in high-tech manufacturing and military applications. If we don't, if China surpasses the United States, we will fade into second-rate status, much like Britain in the 20th century. We will be poorer, weaker, and less secure. The choice is ours, at least for a while.